Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we'll, we'll just we'll bring him in when he gets here. Um, Good evening. Welcome to the post-game news conference for the 2021 college football playoff semifinal at the 86th Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. This Zoom will feature Cincinnati head coach Luke Fickle, along with student athletes quarterback Desmond Ritter and linebacker Joel DeBlanco. There are also three additional media Zoom interview sessions with additional Cincinnati student athletes, Alabama head coach Nick Saban and Crimson Tide student athletes. Please check your email for login information. A full transcript <coughs> along with video and audio files from all post-game press conferences will be distributed via email and posted in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic section of the College Football Playoff Media Portal. To gain access to the portal, send an email to licensing at catapultsports.com. The format for this interview session is we will begin with an opening statement from Coach Fickle, followed by questions for the student athletes, and then we will conclude with questions for Coach Fickle. As a reminder to the media, please use the raise hand function to indicate you want to ask a question. And when you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation before asking your question. And now we'll get going with Coach Fickle's opening statement. Coach, thank you for joining us. No, thank, um, well, obviously this is a gut wrenching. This is really, really, really difficult for, you know, for everybody, but most importantly for the, the 30 or so seniors that, uh, you know, have brought this program and, and, and this team so far. Um, those guys have done everything. They've sacrificed. They've committed. Um, you know, it's 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 really tough. And uh, you know, we we didn't get it done tonight. And you know, we didn't play complimentary football. Uh, we knew the the battle of the trenches was going to be a big deal. And um, you know, I think that uh, that's kind of where the game was won. And you know, and, and no phase of it did we uh, give ourselves the best opportunity. Um, you know, it, it's very difficult. It's difficult on these guys because they've worked so hard, they've committed so much, uh, they've done everything we've asked them to do. We just, uh, we were a bit short, obviously, tonight. Okay, and now we'll open it up to questions for the student athletes. Once again, if you want to ask a question, please do the raise hand function. And we'll start it off with a question from Tino Lavenzi. Tino. Hey there, this is Tino Lovenzi from Spectrum News. One, forgive me if it's a little loud. I'm in the photographer's room. Um, this question is for Desmond Ritter. Um, Des, obviously, this is the, the last game in your Bearcats career, but I just uh, want you to maybe reflect a little bit about you know uh, that career and, and you know the, the good things that you're going to remember from that and think about. Obviously, this game didn't go the way that you wanted it to. Yeah, uh, no, it's been a, a journey of ups and downs throughout this past five years. Um, you know, I've met a lot of brothers and a, a lot of good close friends that are going to be with me for the rest of my life. Um, I, I've played a lot of great football with a lot of great players, a lot of great coaches. Um, and I'm going to remember every single year of it from my, my true freshman year to when I wasn't playing to all the way till now. And, and this loss, you know, I'm going to remember. Um, but, you know, I just want to thank Coach Fick and, and all the coaching staff. Um, all the training staff, academic staff, um, and, and you know all of our fans who supported us even in the in our down years, um, and, and everyone who came out to this weekend and, and over this past week to come out, travel to Dallas and support us. I just want to say thank you. And I follow that up with uh, just uh, your thoughts on on this game, the emotions that you have going through you right now. Obviously, coming up on the short end of the, this journey that you guys have been on. Yeah, um, you know, obviously that's not how we or anyone would want a, a game to end is with a loss. Um, so, you know, it, it, it hurts for us seniors because, you know, we can't come back here and do anything, you know, for and ground with our brothers and, and try to get at them again next year. Um, but we know that, you know, at, at the end of our seasons, you know, the only thing we can do is learn. Um, so these young guys are going to take it in, you know, watch the film and continue to get better and continue to grow and, and to continue to be a, a, a greater Cincinnati team in the years to come. Okay, our next question is from <coughs> Bill Carroll. Bill? Bill Carroll, Nuts and Bolts Sports, and Desmond, thank you so much for your time. So, now he dropped off. 
All right, our next question, we had a problem there. Oh, Is not this... sure what happened there. Okay, you're back, uh, good. Oh, good. Uh, sorry, once again, Desmond, thank you for your time. What was it about uh, what you got in terms of both pressures and, and coverage looks that was different from what you'd seen on tape? Or exactly what you expect and they just executed so well that it gave you too much trouble? Uh, they, they didn't do much different on film that, than we had studied. Um, you know, their the execution, it, it's one thing to sit there and watch on film and to sit there and, and draw the, the twists and stunts that they do on, on the board and work it out through practice. Um, it's another thing to come down here and play it on a big stage. Um, you know, our offensive line has done a great job all year, all season, and, and you know, I'll always thank them and, and what they've done for me. Um, and, you know, they, I think they got beat on a couple ones and, and made me move up in the pocket, this or that. Um, and, you know, I had missed a, a couple completed or easy throws. Um, but, you know, it, it's just different between, you know, practice and, and on film and on the board rather than a live game. Um, but other than that, you know, I think they did their best. All right, our next question is from Michael Mirsky. Michael. Hey, uh, this question is for uh, Joel DeBlanco. Uh, obviously, uh, an outstanding season this year. Uh, to today's loss was a tough one, but how do you see the defense progress in the years to come after you leave the program? Uh, you know, we have a lot of young guys coming up and uh, a lot of guys, you know, a little bit of experience coming back too, and I'm just really excited to see how they grow and uh, see how these players step up that, you know, um, we've been they've been under us a little bit just with how much seniors and senior, seniority we have on this team right now, but I'm just really looking forward to seeing how these guys grow and develop as leaders and as men. And uh, I mean, I was just in the locker room talking to, you know, going through everybody and just um, just telling them that I'm looking forward to seeing them grow and who they become as men and leaders and, uh, you know, seeing ball out in the field because um, I love, love everybody in that locker room and especially on the defense. Um, you know, all those days of practice, we just go through so much together and the off seasons um, just train together. And so um, it's truly my brothers and uh, I want nothing but the best for them. And I'm really <laughs> looking forward to seeing them grow. Okay, our next question is from Jeremy Roush. Hey, uh, Jeremy Ralph, Fox 19 in Cincinnati. This is for Desmond. Uh, Desmond, I wanted to ask you about uh, something Coach Luke Fickle had said last year at the end of the year that you were a good team and you needed to get to great. Um, and that was kind of a mission for this season. Desmond, do you feel like this team was great this season? Do you view this as a great season for UC football? Yeah, I definitely feel like it was a great season, not only for us, um, but hopefully for our fans and, and our entire campus and community. Um, it obviously didn't end the way we wanted to. Um, you know, that, that's going back and, and playing the champs. And, you know, I'm sure if we played them again next year with the same team, you know, it'd be a different score because, um, you know, that's our first time playing Alabama. But, um, you know, that's not an excuse. But, um, yeah, I would definitely say it was a great season. You know, all these guys in the locker room had a ton of fun. Um, with, you want to say, the outside pressure that was put on us. Um, you know, we still won a conference championship, um, still went undefeated in our regular season. Um, so, you know, we're, we're extremely thrilled with where we got at. Um, you know, we, we obviously wanted it to end differently um, and win with a national championship. Um, but, I mean, you know, for us and coming from Cincinnati, um, from the American Conference, you know, this is about as good as you can ask for. All right, our next question will come from Dan Tortora. This is for Desmond. Desmond, you, you know, you talk about unfinished business and coming back to this team and have more in the tank. Do you feel like, even though it doesn't end in a national championship, that there is some finished business here as, as you get set to step forward? Uh, for myself or for the team? <coughs> Recording in progress. For, for you and for the team. Yeah, um, you know, you, for myself, you know, the, I mean, I feel like for both of them, for, for the team and myself, uh, the only way is up. Um, you know, I went out on a loss and our team went out on a loss. So um, the only thing we can do is improve and get better. Um, no one out there, whether myself or, or offense, defense, special teams played, you know, exactly perfect and exactly 100%. Um, so, you know, until we do that on the biggest stages uh, of our lives, then 
um, you know, we, there's still room for improvement and ways to get better. Okay, our next question is from Christopher Heidel. Hi, this is Christopher Heidel from Permission Radio in Baltimore. And this is a question for both uh, the student athletes. What does it feel like representing the American Conference and showing folks that you don't have to be in those other conferences to be in these big games like you did this afternoon? I know it didn't come out the right way. Well, I'd say that uh, the path is there. I mean, you just got to go out there and handle your business. Um, obviously, we would like for it to end differently. But, um, you know, we got here and uh, um, we, we kept telling ourselves that we weren't necessarily carrying a flag for everybody else, but, uh, but ourselves and uh, representing our city and uh, our program. But uh, we did it and, uh, um, yeah, we're just going to keep fighting. Yeah, like you said, um, we weren't carrying the flag for anyone, you know, but ourselves. And you can say the American Conference, um, you know, we're, we're just grateful to have this opportunity and, and be able to be in the position where we're at. Like you said, we also wanted it to end differently um, and wish it could have ended differently. Um, so, you know, I'm hoping that there are other so-called group of five teams or, you know, teams from any conference that can, you know, make it in the playoffs and show that they could compete with the best of the best. Okay, we have time for a couple more questions for the student athletes before we uh, start questions for the coach. So the next up for the players is Justin Williams of The Athletic. Hey, this is uh, for both Des and Joel. Just walking off the field, is it disappointment? Is it pride? Is it a mixture of both? I know it's kind of tough, but in the moment, can you describe what you're feeling there at the end of the game? Yeah, I would say for, for myself, it was definitely a mixture of both. Um, you know, it, it was a little disappointing that we couldn't execute the way that we wanted to, um, that, you know, we couldn't go out there and really play complimentary football, as Coach Fix stated earlier. Um, and, and then, you know, it was joy. It was seeing all those Bearcat fans, um, seeing, you know, all the fans in the stands just who stuck around all the way till the end, you know, who made the, the 12, 13, 14 hour journey or, you know, from wherever they were in, in the United States um, to come watch us play football. It was you know, just a, a surreal moment. And I made sure that, you know, I was one of the last ones to leave the field just to, you know, show my support, you know, and my thanks for everyone who came out and everyone who supported us along our journey. Okay, one more question for the student athletes. Oh, Joel's got it. Okay, sorry, Joel's got to finish his answer. Sorry. Um, like Dad said, just a combination of both. Obviously, you know, super disappointed to lose that game. And um, like he said, not really playing complimentary football like we do and uh, like we have all season. But, uh, you know, looking around and being able to look around and see all the Bearcats and uh, people that came and from all over the country and came and supported, um, it was truly a blessing. And uh, just so thankful that God put us in this position. Um, it really felt like his hand was on us this entire season, just keeping guys safe and protected from injuries and um, all that. And so just really thankful for the opportunity and uh, all right, our last question will come from Zachary Braziller of the New York Post. Um, guys, you know, there was obviously, there's always been a big debate of, you know, whether the, the group of five school deserves to be in there. What do you think you guys showed tonight when it comes to that debate, you know, in terms of, you know, does, does, this, does the smaller schools deserve a shot? I think absolutely we do. I think. I know the score was, I don't know what the score was, 20, whatever it was. But I just think that, you know, so many of their, those plays were just just inches away of, of uh, making the play or, you know, just a couple missed tackles here and there, and that really cost us. I think we absolutely belonged in this game. But uh, at the end of the day, we just didn't execute uh, like we have all season. And so uh, I definitely think, you know, um, People can play with uh, the top, with the top dogs, and uh, yeah, we're just right there, inches away, but uh, didn't get the job done. So. Yeah, I definitely think um, that other schools, you know, and, and so-called smaller schools, group of five schools, could, you know, potentially keep making the playoffs as, as long as you know they put together seasons upon seasons. You know, I think that it, it's not just one season of an undefeated record. You can't go you know, two and six or two and two and 10 in the season before and then go undefeated and expect to, 
you know, make it in the college football playoffs. I think it has to be a program that's built up over years and years um, of just good football and good execution football. Um, and, and like Joel said, you know, the score, the end of the score was 26 or 27 to six. Um, and, and, you know, there, there was no, there was no fight to, to, to stop. You know, we wanted to fight to the end. Um, and, you know, our execution just wasn't there um, on offense. Um, we weren't playing complimentary football, so I, I think the score reflected, you know, a different game. Um, but, you know, I think any of, any of the teams in America can come out here and play with, you know, anyone they want to, as long as they come out here and execute and play their best ball. Okay, Desmond, Joel, thanks for joining us. Uh, you can go back to the locker room now, and we're going to start with sure, Coach Strickle here in just a moment. Okay, media, please uh, remember to uh, state your name and affiliation before you ask your question for Cincinnati head coach Luke Fickle. And we will begin with Tino Bovenzi. Hey, coach, obviously this one's a tough one to digest. You said it was gut-wrenching a little bit ago. Um, at, at the end of the day, you still got to be proud of this group of guys, like you said, the seniors. What's the message you know, to them as they, as they end their careers here at Cincinnati? Well, in the game of life, like sports, it never all, it very rarely ends how you envision it. And um, these guys have done a phenomenal job. There's, there's so much uh, um, that they've been through. And, uh, and I mean that for the whole group, of especially the seniors. Um, so it is very difficult. It's very tough. Um, but more than anything, I told them, I, I do not want to see them hang their head. I do not want to see any fraction of anything amongst the brotherhood that they've built. You know, because when you when when you get beat like that, there's obviously you know at times you start to wonder why, and and we've never pointed a finger, and we won't start pointing a finger, and and um, those guys deserve the very best, and uh, it doesn't feel like that right now, um, but I can't be more proud uh, of of a group of guys, and I mean that the whole, but in particular those seniors for what they've done for us and our program and our community. Um, and for me and my family. Okay, our next question is going to come from Neil Meyer of the Front Office News. Hey, Coach Fickle, could you just talk about the excitement around the city, uh, the city of Cincinnati and what it means for this city, even though it fell short? Could you walk us through what it was like this season? No, it, it was phenomenal. I mean, last year was was a great year, but it was so difficult because you know of the situation and. Um, to have the electricity, to have the energy that was back in Nippert Stadium and amongst our campus and, and within our city. Uh, I don't do a, good, a great job of, of recognizing and, and maybe even stepping back to see some of that. Um, but I took the opportunity there at the beginning of the game to, to kind of take a peek and, and to recognize the, the energy that, uh, that I say these guys have created and, and, and for our football team and our program. But, you know, for our community, our city, and in our entire state. Okay, our next question will come from Joe Ellis of the Sideline Sports Network. Hey, Coach, congratulations on making the playoffs. Tough loss today. Um, how does it feel to start building a legacy? You guys had a great year last year. You came back and did even better this year. I mean, how does it feel to be building something special for Cincinnati in a group of five? Well, it it uh, it doesn't feel great right now, but um, you know, I, when we at least have the opportunity to to step back here and reflect a little bit more and 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 recognize um, where it is that we've 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 come from, and I mean that just in the last five years, and I mean that with this group of guys, it's it is. I I don't uh, I don't I don't know if I can see it or think about it right now in this in the midst of this, um, but I promise you, my wife will make me later tonight. Uh, try to <laughs> take a couple deep breaths and recognize <clears throat> where these guys have taken us and what they've done for us. All right, our next question is from Joe Deneman. Joe, are you there? I'm sorry, I hit it by accident. Carry on with that. All right, we're going to go forward to Dan Tortora with a question. Dan. Coach, you, you spoke about the upperclassmen and, and the group of guys that are going to be moving forward. 
just what you can We lost you there, Dan. All right, Dan, are you there? Yeah, Coach, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Just what you can say about you were, you were speaking about the upperclassmen and the importance of this group of guys, just how you want to thank them and what you want to say about what they've done to be a part of what Cincinnati has become in football. Words, uh, words can't describe what it is that those guys have mean to me, mean to us, mean to this program. Um, it's really difficult to put into words. Uh, they've done so much, and, and everybody just kind of recognizes the wins, but the reality is they, they've created an environment, a culture. They've created an atmosphere that, that is a true family. And uh, we don't, uh, you know, in families we do have, you know, we do have issues and, and we do have, you know, ups and downs, but um, you really recognize it when, when you – when it doesn't go the way you want it to go, and uh, you you really look around that locker room, and, and there's obviously some heavy hearts, and and uh, but then you see the love that they have for one another, and um, sometimes it takes something that doesn't go quite as well for you to kind of step back and recognize just how far these guys have really grown and grown together. Okay, our next question will come from Justin Williams of the Athletic. Coach, your time in Cincinnati has kind of been defined by these like checkpoints, getting up to the AAC Conference Championship, losing it, coming back and winning, getting to a New Year's Six Bowl game in the playoff this year. Does this feel like that right now? Like, you know, you got to another checkpoint, and this is going to be something that can help propel you guys to have the next time? That's the last thing that I reminded them as, uh, as we broke it down in there is, you know, you don't ever forget the feeling. You know, just because you, you work so hard, you got to recognize the things that aren't guaranteed to you. And, uh, I don't think you should ever forget the feeling that uh, that it's like um, when you do come up short. And um, so I know for myself, I know for a lot of the guys in there that are built the same way, uh, this will be an incredible motivation to finding a way to to take the next step um, and take the next step with a lot of a lot of new guys. All right, we have time for two more questions. Next question is from Keith Jenkins. Keith Jenkins, Cincinnati Enquirer. Coach, you kind of stressed it a little bit, but guys like Evan Prater, Trey Tucker, Deshaun Pace, these are the leaders of the program. You know, do you think this loss will impact them as they're taking the reins? I hope. I hope it does. I hope that uh, they recognize how fragile it is and how hard it is to continue to grow. Um, you know, and uh, you know the motivation is is always key to me. And you know, when you can sit there and see the you know how much it means not not that it doesn't mean as much to them but how much it means to those guys that are not going to have another opportunity to wear that helmet put that sea paw on their chest and go out and represent um, our program and our team um, I hope they don't ever forget that what they saw from those guys because you know when the times get tough and they will um, in preparation in games um, they'll have to draw upon those things to continue to motivate them all right, final question will be from Jeremy Rausch. Hey, uh, Jeremy Rausch, Fox 19 in Cincinnati. Uh, Luke, I know you've reflected quite a bit during this press conference. Are you able to reflect on the job you've done at Cincinnati to get here now? And are you able to kind of see where you still want it to go from where you are sitting right now, even after tonight's loss still? No, I, I, I haven't had a chance to reflect, but uh... – I know we're not where we want to be, and um, I continue to reiterate in order to be a top 10 program, which is what we strive to be, there's got to be consistency. And uh, the consistency in year to year as a program, the consistency on the football field, consistency in everything that we do. And um, we won't rest, we won't relax until we, uh, till we get to that point. And then when we get to that point, then we'll push to be a top five program. So um, that's probably the best reflection that I've got. Uh, I don't know exactly where we are right now, um, but uh, I know this, uh, this hurts, and I know that uh, this will be a great motivator as we continue to climb back. Coach Fickle, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for your coverage of the college football playoff at the 86th Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. As a reminder to the media, a full transcript along with video and audio files from all post-game press conferences will be distributed via email and posted in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic section of the College Football Playoff Media Portal. To gain access to the portal, 
send an email to licensing at catapultsports.com. Thank you for joining us.